Oh, what's up guys so today we're going to continue our series and we're going to implement the turning place animations okay so let's begin the first things we need is to go to our animation blueprint so let's go to characters mannequins animations and open the animation blueprint and in the last video we created this turn in place function okay and right now we're going to go to the animation graph to the locomotion state machine and right here we're going to add the transitions from idle to turn left and idle to turn right okay so over here we can search for the turn animations and as you can see um, now we can right click and say browse to assets okay and over here we can delete all these montages that we no longer going to need so this way they're not here occupying space on your project. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is grab the turn left animation over here and call it turn left. And we're going to move the turn right 90 over here and call it turn right. Okay, like this. Now, um, the first transition we're going to make is from idle we can drag to the turn left like this and we can open this transition. So over here we can say and. So if um, all of these conditions are true, we can transition to the turn left animation. So the first thing we're going to check is if our root yaw offset is crossing the angle that we want to turn, okay? So we can go over here to turn in place, get the root yaw offsets like this and say greater. <coughs> and we can promote this into a variable and call it turn angle. Okay. So uh, now we can compile and save. We can click this. And if we go down here, we can set this to 85. Okay like this now we can connect this here um, the next thing we're going to check is if we are not moving so we can go to essential movement data grab the should move and we can say not boolean like this so if we are not moving we can transition as well and we can add another pin over here and we're going to check if we're not falling so we can grab the is falling and copy the not over here connect here and here so if we're not moving and not falling we can also transition now the last thing we're going to add so we're going to add another pin is uh, a check to see if we are aiming so we can grab this over here and say um if we are aiming, then we can also transition over here. Um, that's basically it. So we can compile and save and go back to the locomotion over here. <clears throat> and now we can grab this over here and make the transition back to idle. So open it up. And over here we can say or. So if any of these conditions is true, we will go back to idle. Okay. So the first thing we're going to check is if the animation is almost ending. Okay, so we can say time remaining ratio. And as you can see, it says uh, turn left 90. So we can click it. And if this is less than 0.65. Okay, the reason I give a value uh, here is if you open the animation, you will see that um, the animation will end about here and it still continues a few more seconds. So I just want to make sure that we are around here to end the transition. Okay. We can also cut the animation if you want, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to do it like this. So we can connect this here. And now we're going to check the inverse conditions that we did on the other transition. So we can grab the should move, the is falling, and the aiming okay so and in this case we can just connect the should move over here add a new pin connect the is falling so like this and uh the aiming we're going to say not boolean 
so if we are not aiming we will go back to idle okay like this um that's basically it we can compile and save now we're going to do the same thing to the turn right so we're going to make a transition over here and another one back to idle okay so we can copy uh this once so this one to the turn left we can copy all of this and we can paste it to the turn right transition okay <coughs> over like this um now uh, a thing that we need to do is over here on the turn angle we have to invert it so we're going to say multiply like this by minus one okay and we can connect this here uh, we can also uh, actually delete this one and say less instead of greater okay and then we can connect this back here okay because we want to check the uh, inverse angle okay now um, we can uh, also copy uh, the transition from uh, the animation back to idle okay so this one we can copy all of this, uh, not this thing over here, okay. And the transition here back to idle. We can paste this here, connect this over here. And now we're going to say time remaining ratio for the turn right 90, okay. And now connect this over here. Compile, save, and that's it. So um, this way we should be able to transition to the states. So if we hit play now, you will see um, if I start aiming and cross the angles, it will start playing the animations, okay? Just like this. So um, now it's time to actually make the character um, rotates accordingly to the animation okay so uh, let's go back to the turning place function so on the event graph over here we can open this up and um, right here we're going to move this a little bit like this and um, over here if we are not moving we're going to say sequence so first we're going to do the things that we were doing before and then we're going to uh, calculate the animation difference so that we can apply that to our root yaw offsets, okay? So um, the first thing we're going to do here is get curve value, okay? And what this will do is allow us to read curves from the animations that are currently playing, okay? So if we open the turn left animation, you can see that we have two curves over here, right? The remaining turn yaw and the turn yaw weight. So these curves are useful because they will uh, tell us exactly which values are applied in these curves during the frames that are, are currently playing, okay? So if it is right here, it's going to tell me that this curve is going to be about uh, 50 or something, you know? So um, this is useful for us to communicate with the animations um, using the animation blueprint, okay? So over here on the turn left animation, we're going to add a new curve, add metadata curve, go all the way down and say create new. And here we're going to call it is turning, okay? This will create a curve with the value of one. And this is exactly what we want. So we're going to um, do the same thing on the turn right over here. We're going to add a new metadata curve. But this time we're going to select it because it already exists. Okay. And as you can see, now we have the same curve over here. So we can save all. <coughs> and the next thing we're going to do is go down here to root motion and disable the root motion because we're no longer going to use it and on the turn left we can do the same thing and disable the root motion okay and that's basically it on this side 
So now if we go back to the animation blueprint, the curve that we are going to read first is going to be the is turning curve that we just created. Okay. So if the animation is playing, this will always return one because we set this curve to be one uh, on this animation. Okay. So if the animation is not playing, this node will always return zero. Okay. So uh, this is useful for us to check if um, we actually transition to the turn left or turn right animation. Okay. So right here, the first thing we're going to do is check if this is greater than zero. Okay. <clears throat> and say branch. Uh, just like this. We can connect this to the sequence over here. We can organize this like this. So if it is, it means that we are playing the animation. Okay. Then we want to apply the turn in place calculations. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is read another curve. So the remaining turn yaw curve, which will tell us um, the current rotation of the animation so that we can apply that to our root yaw offset. Okay. Uh, so over here, we can copy this get curve value over here and change the name to remaining turn yaw. Okay. Just like this. Now, um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, invert this uh, curve depending on the direction that it is, if it is to left or right. The reason for that is because this one starts on 0 uh, to 90 and the turn right starts on 90 to 0. So we have to invert the values. Okay. So over here, what we're going to do is uh, select and we're going to grab our uh, root yaw offset like this and uh, we're going to check if it is greater than zero. Uh, so and if the root yaw offset is less than zero, in this case, not boolean not less than zero okay and we can connect this over here okay now connect this here um so if this is true we are going to use the default curve value okay and if this is false we're going to uh, multiply this by minus one so that we can invert this value okay and that's basically it now we can grab this here and promote it into a variable and call it distance curve. Okay. Now we can move this here to the turning place like this. Um, we can connect this here. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is save the last distance curve so that we can calculate the difference after. Okay. So over here, we're going to get the distance curve. We're going to promote this into a variable and call it last distance curve. Okay. Just like this. Sit. Um, now uh, we're going to uh, calculate the difference between this curve. Okay. So we first we read the values of the animation curves and now we're going to apply the calculations. So over here um, we can uh, grab the distance curve like this. We can grab the last distance curve and don't forget to move this over here like I did. Okay. So like this. And from here, we're going to subtract uh, the distance curve uh, like this. And uh, we're going to promote this into a variable and call it delta distance curve. Okay. Just like this. Connect this over here. Um, and now what we're going to do is uh, basically um, subtract or add the distance curve to our root yaw offset. So we can grab the root yaw offset. 
we can say greater. So if it is greater than zero, we're going to say branch. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if it is greater than zero, we're going to subtract. And if it is not, we're going to uh, add. Okay. So over here, we can grab the root your offsets. We can say subtract and we can grab our delta distance curve and again don't forget to move this over here and now we're going to set our root your offsets to this value okay you can connect this here you can organize this here and that's it now um we can grab all of this and copy over here connect this here and we can replace the subtract for add <clears throat> and connect this over here like this um that's it now um the last thing we need to do is um calculate the excess of the rotation so that we can also add or remove that from our uh root yaw offset so to do that, uh, we're going to grab our root your offset. We're going to say ABS, so absolute. And we're going to promote this into a variable and call it um, ABS root your offset. Okay, and move it over here to the turning place. Um, now we can connect both of these cases over here like this so that we can continue the process and now we're going to check if the absolute yaw offset is greater than the turn angle that we created before okay and uh, from here we can say branch so uh, if it is it means that there is an excess on the rotation and we have to apply that to our root yaw offset so over here, what we're going to do is get the absolute root your offset. We're going to subtract and grab the uh, turn angle, okay, like this. And we're going to promote this into a variable and call it your excess, okay. Now we can move this into the turning place, and that's it. We can connect this over here and now we can just um copy all of this thing over here so copy this paste it over here like this connect it here and basically we're just going to replace the variable so instead of subtracting and adding the delta distance curve we're going to add and subtract the your axis okay so just grab the variable and drag it over here to replace and drag it over here to replace and that's basically it okay so this is all the code for the turning place um so if we hit play now you will see that um we should be turning when we reach the desired angle okay so as you can see and if we turn really quickly you'll see that the spine will no longer break and um that's basically it so every time that we are aiming the character will always adjust its feet based on the animation rotation okay and that's it guys um i hope you liked it i hope you learned something with it and don't forget to subscribe